IPv4, IPv6 in my PowerPoint slide. Before introducing IPv6, let me introduce what is Internet Protocol version 4 or IPv4. Internet Protocol version 4, IPv4, is the fourth revision in the development of Internet Protocol and the first version of the protocol to be widely deployed. Right now, uh, we are using mostly IPv4 in our, in our computer or when, whenever we use internet or use web browser, mostly we use IPv4. Now let me introduce what is IPv6. Internet Protocol version 6. IPv6 is the latest revision of the Internet Protocol, the prim primary communication protocol upon which the entire Internet is built. It is intended to replace the older uh, IPv4 version. Now let me introduce what is subnetting. A sub subnetwork or subnet is a logically visible subdivision of an IP. The practice of dividing a network into two or more networks is called subnetting. Now let me go through the um, various ways of subnetting IPv6. Subnetting, subnetting in IPv6 is not drastically different than subnetting in IPv4. Before subnetting in IPv6, we have to keep something in our mind. As um, the total bits used in IPv6 is 128 bits. Now let me tell you how you got this 128 bits. You can see uh, this is a IPv6 address and each address is 16 bits and there is 8 16 bits address in IPv6. So if you multiply 8 with 16 you'll get 128 bits. So the total bits used in, uh, used in IPv6 is 128 bits which is separated into 8 parts with each 4 bits character by column. Each IPv6 set represents 16 bits, as I said earlier, 4 characters at 4 bits each. The last bits, last 48 bits cannot be used for subnetting because it is preserved for host ID. Take out the 48 bits from the 128 bits, that means we have now 80 bits, which is more bits than the entire IPv4 address space. According to RFC 4291, the current recommended smallest prefix is a slash 64. With so many address in IPv6, there isn't the same need for address conservation as there in, is in IPv4. We can assign a 64 to a point-to-point -point link and not feel guilty. The only exception to this is the recommendation from ARIN to use a slash 28 on a loopback addresses. This gives us one block of hex digits or 16 bits to use for subnetting. One block might not sound like much, but 16 bits are half of the entire IPv4 address space. In order to follow the uh, for proper route aggregation and summarization, we should define site IDs that we can use at each location. How, should, how we should break this down depends, but the easiest way may be to break things down along the nibble boundaries. This can give us the few options. Option 1. Four sites, four subsites at each site, that is 4096 subnets at each subsite. First two bits for the site, next two bits for the subsite, first nibble, three next three nibbles for subnets, that is 2 to the power 12. You can see that in example step one. 
we're going to take this one one two three four four bits this is for the site and sub site two to the power of four bits two to the power of four bits and two to the power of four bits if we add this we'll get two to the power two bits. that means altogether we have 4096 total subnets in this option now let's go to option 2 16 sites 16 sub sites 256 subnets first nibble for the site second for the sub site and the last two for the subnet this first one for the site the second one for the sub site and these two we're going to use for the subnet that means we have 2 to the power 4 bits and 2 to the power 4 bits if we add these two we'll get 2 to the power 8 bits that means altogether we'll get 256 total subnets now let's move to the option 3 16 site 256 sub sites that means total subnets we'll get is 16 the first nibble for the site, the second and third for the subsite, and the final nibbles for the subnet. In this one, you can see this one is for the site, these two for the subsites, and the last one we're going to use for the subnet. That means 2 to the power 4, which will give us the result of 16 total subnets. Now let me uh, explain you the similarities of IPv6 subnetting to IPv4 subnetting. As we already see earlier, we can get a lot of subnets from IPv6 address. The similarities of IPv6 subnetting to IPv4 subnetting are the process involves the separation of the networks and the subnet portion of an address from the host identifier in order to submit a network extend the natural mask using some of the bits from the id portion of the address to create a subnetwork id and third the routing prefix is expressed in cidr notation fourth the traffic between subnetworks is exchanged or routed with a special gateway called routers fifth the modern standards for specification of the network prefix is CIDR notation used for both IPv4 and IPv6 network. Now let me explain some differences between the IPv6 and IPv4. The first difference, in IPv4 we usually uh, submit to conserve addresses, but in IPv6 address conservation is not factor because we can get a lot of address from the IPv6 the second one to conserve address in IPv4 we use variable length subnet masking VLSM again in IPv6 we don't need to conserve space so we assign and use the same prefix length number third using 64 subnets we have enough addresses for the host so we never really need to calculate the number of hosts per subnet in ipv6 subnetting we are concerned mostly about the number of subnet fourth broadcast address are used to send traffic to all nodes on a subnet in ipv4 but in ipv6 uses uses a link local scope all nodes multicast address Fifth, the IPv4 protocol uses a 32-bit source and destination address. These addresses are typically represented as a series of four octets. A typical IPv4 address looks something like this one, 192.168.0.1. In IPv6, address is normally written in eight group of four hexadecimal digit, each separated by columns. For example, 2001 column OF68 column 0000 column and at last 1986 column 69AF in IPv4 if we have to write the U URL we, we will write like this http slash slash 14.235.10.4 
but in IPv6 we're going to write like this we're going to use the boxes over here these are my reference where I got this information from 